Hi, hello. Okay, it's here. <laughs> Okay, hello and welcome to how I made my light up Cinderella dress using fibre optic fabrics. You may be asking, what's here? My light up fabric from Luminous Nata. It's here. I am so excited, I've been tracking this um, like every 20 minutes and it was delivered today. So let's open, let's open it. I've been wanting to make a light up dress for so long and use a fiber optic fabric. Um, so, oh my goodness! Oh my god, look at this! So these are all the fiber optic cables which they've already bundled, which is amazing. Oh, that's gonna make life easier. Oh my goodness! Look at it! So nice feeling as well. Oh my god! kind of how it works. There's an app so you can change the colour. Oh, I'm so excited. There's also a rainbow setting I've seen people use which I am so excited to use. It looks so cool. Wow you can wash this fabric! Oh my god that's awesome! I didn't know you could wash it. Oh wow! Yeah you can hand wash it! Oh that's awesome! Oh my god, oh my god it's glowing. Okay, it's not very visible because it's light, but this is glowing! Okay, so quick low down on the fibre optic fabric and kind of how it works and then we can get into the making with it. So this is what your fabric will look like. I was surprised at how normal it looks, it does look like a normal fabric. Um, it has a really nice like texture to it, it's kind of translucent uh, if you can see, so it's kind of it's nice and thin as well, uh, really nice to sew with. It feels a bit like a really thick organza, which is really nice. And the kind of focal point of the fibre optic fabric, the fibre optic cables. Um, so this is what they look like, but basically across the whole, both edges as well, are all these fibre optic cables. So they run through the fabric, down the width, and they're all connected up here into the black um, tube is that everything needs to be connected to a fibre optic cable if you want it to light up so you cut your pieces down the sides but the general gist is you'd not want to if you cut the fibre so it's disconnected from here so for example if you cut the fibre here nothing below that will light up on that fibre because it's been cut and it will not be connected to the power source. Now I'll show you how to cut it in a sec. Um, for the light up part, it's very simple. You'll get these battery packs. So you'll either get the big battery packs like these, which are connected to these cables, or you can get the smaller ones for things like accessories. So this is a smaller one that just has three of the little fibre optic cables and a smaller battery box. So if you start up the battery box, eee, these light up. And then you connect them into these. So there's a screw on the end of this and there is a screw in point there. And you just screw it in. Some are a bit tighter than others. But once that's screwed in, I'll screw in all three for you and I'll show you what it looks like on the fabric in the dark. 
but once you screw it in that fabric in that portion will light up you don't need to light up both ends uh, just one end will light up the whole fabric so you don't need to plug it in both ends which is how you get the skirts and things where you can cut the whole bottom hem and it'll still look nice and bright so that is now the top and I will go switch the lights off give me a sec okay so it's still a bit dark still light here unfortunately but if you can kind of see how all the cables are glowing and there you go um you can see the light so obviously this looks much better in the dark and you'll see it in a sec um but that is how you get your fabric to light up next i will show you how to cut it and sew it all together and how i made my cinderella dress okay step one cutting your fiber optic fabric Okay, so here we go. Um, I waited until it was night time um, before I did this so we could get the best kind of like glow and effect so you could see the fabric for what it was. Um, kind of looked like I was having a rave in my kitchen at 3am. I was worried the neighbours might get concerned, but it was worth it. So get ready now after I just screw in all the lights. So it takes a sec to screw everything in, but once it's screwed in, it's great. And you can kind of unplug the battery packs without unscrewing the cables, which is brilliant. Um, so here we go. I'll switch the lights off in three two one and here she is um so as you can see in the dark it looks absolutely phenomenal uh the light is incredible i was so excited when i saw this um so now you have your fabric lit up you don't have to cut it lit up if you not want to but i wanted to because what's the point in having light up fabric if you cannot see it um <laughs> and seeing it cut is really cool so cutting the bodice pieces was a bit different than normal fabric, but not as different as I thought it would be. Uh, it was not as difficult. It was not as hard as I thought it would be. So definitely do not be afraid of it. Um, first of all, I cut out my bodice pieces the same way I would cut out a normal pattern. The only difference is is I cut them out one layer completely in a blackout curtain fabric. This will stop all the seams and all the lines and all the offcuts showing through from the lining onto the front of the dress. So once I did that, all I had to do was lay them out onto my fiber optic fabric. Now, a very important fact to note when cutting out your bodice pieces is if you can see here, you must always lay your bottom of your bodice piece to the bottom of the edge of the fabric as close as you can get to the fiber optic cables. It does not matter if the edge is not quite straight, but try and put your straightest piece as possible. Because if your bottom of your fabric is not connected to the fiber optic cables, it will not light up. It's very important to make sure you connect it and keep it connected and do not cut any of those connection points. So as you can see, I have a curved edge on the bottom of my pieces. Do not cut that edge. Leave it as it is. You can fold it up and it'll... Um, go nice and neat into the inside of the bodice at the end but if you cut that your bodice will not light up so also worthy to note you can see how I have some curves on these bodice pieces when I'm cutting but I'm not cutting around super close to the curves and I'm not undercutting any of the curves so I'm not cutting any of the fabric close to the bottom of the edge and then having something that needs to light up above it because it will not light up so as you can see I'm laying out all these pieces here it does serve well to lay all your bodice pieces in order of how they're assembled. This is because, if you can see, some of the fiber optic cables are connected to two different pieces of bodice panel while being connected to the same fiber optic um, light port. So if you have them on opposite sides of the bodice, the cables will not reach. I learned that the hard way, but thankfully I only cut one bodice piece wrong, which I was really proud of. Um, so here we go. As you can see, um, I'm still cutting. Um, you can use both sides of the fabric to cut your um, bodice pieces, by the way. Um, so you just the middle will end up being unusable because it will not have any fiber optic cables on either side, which is a bit annoying, but it's still brilliant to work with. Um, it was really nice to cut as well, although especially with this yellow color, I kept thinking it was Rapunzel's hair from Tangled, which was really cool. Um, kind of really cool to see the lights disappear as you cut it. But there you go. So that is how you would cut your bodice pieces. For specialist curves, like the one on this, which is in the front panel of my bodice, you can see how it's a super, quite a steep curve. Um, and it's very wide at the top and very narrow at the bottom. 
Normally, you would just cut that curve as normal. However, with the fiber optic fabric, if I cut along that curve, none of the top of the bodice would light up, which is of course not what I wanted. So in order to cut this in the fiber optic fabric, I have to make sure not to undercut any of the fibers at the top. So in order to do this to kind of make it easier on me, so I definitely did not cut any of the fibers, I cut along the left side first, so the side with the center front seam, and then I cut along the top edge, not too close to the top edge, just to make sure that I could trim it later, but to make sure that the fiber, there would be all fiber optic fabric in the right place, and then down the side, other side. So I kind of had to measure to make sure using the fiber optic cables as a guide, and then cut up in a straight line to the top where the outer widest point was. This made sure that all of the bodice piece would light up and then that would then get tucked into the lining so you'll never see it. And because of the um, the curtain fabric, which is um, dark, you will not be able to see through that curtain fabric. And thus, you will get a light up bodice without any little extra, extra bits. <laughs> Step two is sewing your fiber optic fabric. Before I even assemble my bodice, the first thing I did was prepare my pattern pieces. So as I said before, I cut out my bodice pieces normally in a blackout curtain fabric and then cut around them in a fiber optic fabric. As you can see, it's basically a rectangle at the moment, but I'll trim the edges in a second, as you can see here. But first of all, I needed to make sure those layers would stay together. So I just did a quick tacking stitch on the machine around the edges of the pattern piece to hold them both together. Uh, this was super simple, I did it on a stitch width 0, stitch length 3, so a little bit larger than a normal stitch, but not much, just to keep everything in place. You can also hand sew it with a tacking stitch, it's entirely up to you, I just prefer to machine sew it because this fabric is so easy to machine sew. Um, I did not have to do anything differently, which was brilliant, I was expecting to maybe have to use a different foot or something, but no. All I did was use a fine point needle, you do not have to though, I know people who use a normal needle, and it sews like a dream, which is brilliant because I was expecting it to be a bit challenging. So sewing it, um, I just made sure to sew all the pieces together first and then I moved on to assembling the bodice. And here she is with the first seam sewn. So it actually looks like a bodice. I was dancing in the kitchen when I saw it because, oh my goodness, it came together so quickly. I did not expect it to look that good that quick. And here she is with all the panels sewn together. So this was sewn together exactly like a normal bodice. I did not do anything differently. The only different thing I did is because I was making it an animated Cinderella dress, I added a silver piping down the center front seam. Everything else assembled completely normally. Um, the only difference was, was all the little fiber optic cables hanging out the bottom, um, which was a lot to get used to, making sure they did not get tangled, but it was pretty easy once you got used to it. Um, and here she is in all her lit up glory. Um, so I spent ages wandering around fiddling with the controls and looking at the lights, which was really cool to do. For the rest of the bodice, it's a bit different. So this is where it kind of strays from a normal technique. So in order to make sure all the wires were kind of tucked in and everything was neat and stable, my first step was to sandwich the lining best side to the top fabric with the facing underneath the top fabric does not matter which way that one goes because it's not seen at all. And pin the back, centre back seams together. Um, so for the fastening for this bodice, it was important for me to get that in now. I had a bit of a faff wondering what I would use because obviously eyelets is, you cannot use, etc. And in the end, Asta Darling really helped me out here. She helped me out with the entire thing, gave me some amazing diagrams and suggested loops, which is what she used for hers. If you've not seen her video, go check it out. She's amazing. Um, and that's what I ended up using. It worked really well, so I'm really happy with that. I just bought a standard um, commercial loop tape. I think I got it from my local fabric shop, but you can get it on Amazon as well. And just pinned it onto the back seam and just attached it in to so make sure it was all nice and stable. Okay, now a very important step before you hand sew in the lining is inserting your boning into your boning channels. Now, I did this in this order because it kind of makes more sense that you can kind of see how the bodice is in this form before the lining is hand stitched in place. Um, so it depends which type of boning you've used. If you've used like a plastic one or one with boning um, bias binding channels already, you might already have already inserted it. I use a steel 
a steel boning, so I'm inserting it now because it just makes things easier in the sewing perspective. So this is a 10 millimeter plastic covered steel boning. I find it gives a really nice shape and it makes all my bodices lie quite flat, which is good. So, however, to cut this one, unlike the plastic one, you do need some form of like pliers or something. I cut, got these builders ones from B&Q, but you can kind of, you know, buy them from wherever you want or adopt them from your dad from a toolbox. I don't know. Um, but you'd kind of need them to cut it. Otherwise you'll end up with cuts and scrapes all over you from where it whips back. I've done it before. It hurts. Please do not. Um, please do not hurt yourself. Um, so first of all, I kind of, I measure out the length I need against the bodice and then cut it. Um, make sure to trim your edges. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trimming off the edges uh, with the little corners to make sure they're blunt. This is because if you have like the super sharp corners, it can dig in, it can rip your fabric, it can poke out and it can really hurt if it stabs you. Uh, so just make sure to do that um, before you insert them. You can also use sandpaper, but I've found just trimming off the corners works perfectly fine for me. So now you need to insert them into your boning channels. Um, it can be a bit fiddly at first when you've got all your layers, but once you find them, just push them in and make sure they're the right length. If they're too long, you'll not be able to close your bodice up. If they're too short, you'll end up with wrinkles where um, the boning doesn't sit because it'll just throw off the bodice. So just kind of make sure you want probably about half a centimeter maybe um, above kind of like your ending or a little bit above your seam allowance for the bottom. Um, just make sure everything kind of goes in. Double check because I have done it before where I've put my boning in and then suddenly realized, oh no, I've missed one. So just double check all your channels and then you're good to go for sewing in the lining. And with that, your base bodice is finished. Now onto the sleeves. The sleeves were an easy but important part of this dress because they're iconic for Cinderella's kind of silhouette with the little pointy shoulder sleeves. So in order to do these sleeves, I first cut out a pattern, vague shape, in my blackout curtain fabric and then laid it onto my fiber optic fabric and did exactly, cut it exactly the same way I cut my bodice pieces with a little um, edge around the side and trimmed it down. So I ended up with about three fiber optic bundles to one sleeve. And here you can see kind of the vague shape I got. Now I was vague on this because it was going to be folded up and padded and everything. So the, the exact shape does not really matter. I just took a basic sleeve, elongated it a little bit, and then added a bigger bump. So effectively you can see it's kind of graded. So that's just because I want it to be puffier at the back side than the front. So here's me cutting the second sleeve, um, just in the opposite direction. Um, so make sure to make them a um, mirror image of each other. Otherwise you'll end up with one sleeve looking wonky and the other sleeve looking wonky and it'll just all be a mess. Um, so then I cut the wadding. Now, unfortunately I didn't get a video of this, um, but the wadding was literally just slightly smaller shape inside the sleeve. You can either stuff your sleeves with stuffing or you can add wadding, it's up to you. I preferred to add the wadding in just because it was a definite thickness. And that is how I got the puffiness. And here we have the final sleeve shape. So as you can see, you cannot see anything inside it because of the blackout curtain fabric. And it has that kind of nice Cinderella point because of the stuffing. If it takes a few tries, do not worry, it took me a few tries as well to get the right shape but it was worth it in the end. Now onto the most challenging part, but the part I was looking forward to the most, which is cutting the skirt. So seeing all this big amount of light up fabric in one go was so much fun and seeing it all come together and just seeing it illuminated. So the skirt was definitely my favorite part of making this dress. The first step was calculating how much of the fabric I could actually use. So with the fiber optic fabric, you can only use as much fabric as you have fiber optic lights to put in the little holes. So I had to measure and count how many fiber optic cables I needed to get around the skirt and how many I had in my little bag, so how full the skirt could be. In the end, I had just about the perfect amount for going around the skirt while simultaneously having all the right amount of cables, so I was really lucky. I think it ended up being 28 cables on the skirt waist um, with fiber optic lights to make sure everything was illuminated nicely, but I still got a nice twirl. The fabric was super easy to work with and super easy to cut. Um, it, you could also pin it, which was great. I did not expect that. And it was just the matter of getting it all on the mannequin. 
Um, one thing I did find is make sure that your floor is clear because the fiber optic cables will get caught on things. Um, so just make sure that doesn't happen because if they pull out, then that piece of fabric is basically lost, which is really. So here I am trimming the fabric to the right size. Um, I like cutting it in the dark just because it lights up and it looks so cool. Um, and I set aside the rest to use later. So for the overskirt poofs, um, and I did end up with a bit left over as well. And then all that was left to do was sew up the back seam. So for the back skirt fastening, um, I was kind of debating putting a zip in. Um, talked to Asta Darling and realized that was a very bad idea and no one had the time or patience for putting a zip in this. <laughs> um, so I just simply left it with a nice um, finished edge and a hook and eye, um, which did make life a lot easier. So I just left an eight inch gap at the top of the fabric and then sew down the rest of the seam as normal. Then after what well, looks like a very bad impromptu dance session, sorry, it was about 4am at this point and I was listening to my music as I sewed, um, it was time to get the skirt on the mannequin and just check everything was right before I did the waist. So the most amazing thing about this fabric, which I loved, was you can gather it. Like a gathering stitch will work, which is incredible. I didn't, I did not think it would. Um, so to get the Cinderella shape, because she has that nice little bit of like um, extra like volume or lines in the front of her dress, like on the centre front seam, um, I decided to pleat the centre front seam and then gather the rest, especially gathering over the back because I added the extra bum pads to give that beautiful like um, elliptical style shape which she had in her original dress. So I wanted to make sure that I had the volume going over the back, otherwise it would look kind of very strange and very lumpy. So I just popped it over the mannequin and then checked how the waist would fall, measured the pleats in and it was time to gather. So for the ease of gathering, I used a stitch length five on the machine, uh, just a normal straight stitch and pulled in the gathering. Um, I made sure to be very careful pulling these gathering stitches um, because you as you can see here, I was getting it caught on like the fiber optic cables and stuff because you're pulling all the thread. So I would say don't do not do two lines of gathering stitches, just do one because that's just too much thread getting all over the place and getting caught in all your fiber optic cables. And just pull very slowly and very carefully and kind of just gather it up. It does gather well, but just beware because you can get kind of confusing with all the wires going around. And then this is me just gathering it into the waistband. So this was just, I was just using it to kind of distribute the pleats on the front and make sure everything was nice and even and the skirt was all falling nice and flat. Because sometimes when you actually get it on the mannequin, you realize it was a bit of iffy somewhere. So it's always nice just to check everything was falling nice and flat. And also I used this opportunity to make sure all the wires were out and in the open so anywhere everything was. It's important to try and keep track of the wires as you go along just to make sure that nothing gets kind of caught or lost because it will be a faff trying to get back into the pockets and stuff once you've attached all the wires in trying to find a lost one because the panel of the skirt is not lighting up. And here she is in all her glory. Um, I was so excited when I eventually was able to switch the lights on and see the skirt in the shape it would be. And then here is the best part, changing the color. It took a few seconds for them all to sync up, but you'd not even have to press a button. The app just does it for you, which is incredible and made life a lot easier because I thought I would be trying to fiddle with a load of Bluetooth stuff for ages. And you can see I was having a lot of fun changing the colors. I especially like the pink and blue, although that just might be my inner Sleeping Beauty fan talking. Um, but the rainbow was also beautiful. My favorite feature actually was the music feature. So, an absolutely amazing thing you can do on the app, I'll, just, I'll put it in the corner in a sec so you can see, is you can sync it to the songs in your library. So I was going through all my songs and kind of syncing them up um, and seeing which ones fit best. The ones with like the best underbeats and kind of softer ones or slower and like gaps in between kind of fit better. So the Tangled Healing Incantation looked really cool. Uh, BTS Dynamite looked really cool. So there were a few ones that were especially my favorites. The waistband was trickier than normal because I had to trap all of these wires and cables into the waistband so they would not be seen. Now, the way I did this was made a normal waistband, the exact way I normally would, so a rectangle with my waist measurement, sewed it right sides together with the fabric, and then folded it in half, trapping all the wires inside. 
To do this, I took both the wires in and hand stitched the waistband down, making sure to leave holes for all the little black ends to poke out while making sure they were secure. This also meant I knew my measurements now for where I needed the pockets for the battery packs. With all the hard parts out of the way, it came to my fav I say everything's my favorite part, but I loved this part more than anything else, was cutting the skirt hem. So this is where you see the iconic line of light around the edges of the skirts of any fiber optic dresses you might see. This is because you can trim the hem and you get that gorgeous cut off effect. I made sure the hem was the last thing I did though, because I knew if anything went wrong, there was no way I could redo the hem. There was no, you cannot go back from cutting it because once you cut that, the fibers, they're gone. So I made sure everything was settled, the waistband was on, all the fastenings were on, had it on the overskirts, and then just took my time very carefully cutting around the hem. I made the back of the hem around the back slightly longer because I wanted that tiny little tray, not too much that it would impede movement, but enough that it would kind of add that gorgeous flow. And you can see here just how amazing it looks when it goes dark and you get that gorgeous raw edge of light. And finally, I get to try on the completed skirt. I was so excited, um, it looks so cool. And in real life, it's just so much brighter. Wearing it feels amazing. And you can kind of see how everything comes together. I had a quick twirl around and a move around just to check that it was the length I wanted and to check that nothing kind of caught or got moved around when I was sewing. It did not, which I was grateful for. And then I tried out the light settings again. So could not resist doing a bit of pink and blue and it looks even more incredible when it's actually made up. Um, felt like a dream. Now only one thing left to make the iconic Cinderella skirt is her iconic little side poops, which I'm sure have a name, I just do not know it. So if you do, please let me know. The first step was cutting out the fabric for them in the fiber optic fabric. So I made a draft in a lining, just a kind of a plain old lining fabric I had lying around. I used it as a template to cut out the skirt over poops. To reduce bulk, I ended up making sure that all the fiber optic wires would end up in the back so I could hide them underneath in the pockets of the skirt rather than having them again come out through the waist like the ones on the bodice. Just in case it would kind of get a bit bulky, I was a bit worried. So I trimmed them across and then I only needed the fiber optic cables from one side so I was able to cut them away no problem on the other. And here we go. So you can see again that gorgeous little line of light you get. I wanted that around the front um, so because it tucked up nicely under the bodice and the design. So that's kind of how I wanted to aim everything I was cutting. And here's the piece. Um, I ended up gathering and pleating in part. I gathered the back um, about quarter and then pleated the rest to give that super huge volume of shape because this fabric gathers up really nicely. It has so much volume, but it's so light that it just holds its shape really nicely. And this is what it looks like, kind of put over the skirt but just before I gathered and um, pleated it. Um, so as you can see, when you match the color, it looks so much like Cinderella's dress. It just adds that gorgeous like poofy hip shape to the dress and just makes it look so Cinderella. I was so happy when I saw kind of how it was looking in the end. For the overskirts, I ended up attaching them into the bodice instead of into the skirt because the skirt waistband was all nice and neat and it just meant that I could tuck in the wires into the bodice really neatly in the back without them being seen. Okay, we're on to the home stretch, making the accessories. So I knew the second I made this dress that I wanted to make the accessories to go with it because can you really have Cinderella's iconic dress without the gloves and the headband? So first up was the gloves. I got these regular satin gloves from Amazon and then cut open the seam with just a seam ripper to lie them out flat. Uh, this was super easy to do um, and I just liked the little applique they had so I was using it as a base to kind of base everything else off. Once I cut the seam I laid it onto my fiber optic fabric and cut it. This time I cut the seams close to the glove, a lot closer than the bodice pieces and I'll trim them up later to match the exact edges. I then tacking stitched them together and sewed the seam back up and there were the gloves. 
I did not want the gloves to be too bulky, so to finish the edge, I added a bias binding around it, the top edge, and then tucked all the wires into that to keep it a bit neater. This was the first trial run, which I think went really well, and then I tucked everything in. The gloves were a lot simpler than I thought they would be, and I think they turned out great. It was really nice to have that little extra touch to make it feel like Cinderella. Unfortunately, I did not film the making of the headband, but it was a very similar vein. I got a headband and wrapped the fiber optic fabric around it. I did add some wadding underneath to give that typical, that kind of poofy Cinderella headband vibe and just hand stitched it down. And finally, time for the finished result. So this fabric was so much easier to work with, but the result was just as I would ever hoped for. So I was actually made this dress in a week because I was going on holiday the morning I filmed this. I think I filmed this final video about 3 a.m. and I was setting off at 6 to the airport and I was taking the dress with me. So this was the first and final try on to check pocket placements and all that sort of thing. So first of all came the hoop skirt. Um, this is my typical hoop skirt that I use under most of my dresses. And to make that Cinderella elliptical shape, so with the bigger back, um, that makes it look really fluffy in the animated dress, I added this bum pad. So that just makes the skirt lie that little bit higher. Then it was on to the petticoats. Um, so there are lots and lots of layers of petticoats, so I'll fast forward through this quite quickly. There are four layers of net petticoats, which I use in most of my dresses and I reuse, and it gives a really nice shape. And then finally, there is the new petticoat I made for this Cinderella dress, which I love. It's my new favourite petticoat. I used a simple white lining fabric so it's lightweight and then added this gorgeous lace trim I had to the bottom edge because you can actually see a little bit of lace poking out in her original dress when she wears it. So I wanted to kind of replicate that effect. And then finally, the actual fibre optic fabric layer. So this has a series of pockets on the inside to hide the battery packs and all the wires tucked, wires tucked into the waistband. So this also has a hook and eye fastening on the back waistband and a little bit further down as well on the closure just to make sure everything lies neat and flat. And for a little twirl, um, this is how it moves, which is really pretty. Now here are the overskirts and bodice all attached into one layer so it's just easier to put on. Um, I did also attach the gloves into the same layer because they're all attached into the same battery packs. Um, so it just makes it easy for me to put everything together. I attempted to lace up the corset by myself, but quickly realised that it was a losing battle, um, sat down on the job, and then also got some help, and this is the result. I was so happy with how it turned out, especially the fact that it looked good in the light as well as the dark. I really wanted to kind of show off the fabric and have a silhouette that everyone would recognise, both light and dark, regardless of whether or not the fibre optics were on. And I think I achieved that. I love the subtle colour difference in the fibre optics when it's on white. So you get those tones of blue and purple coming through. And yeah. Thank you so much to Lumen Sonata for sending me the fabric. I had an amazing time making this dress. And I cannot believe it's actually finished. So I had to do a few mandatory bifty bofty boo spins. As well as um, having my siblings man the lights so they could switch it off at the exact moment I was spinning. So it would look very cool. And here is a bit of a close-up. So I like how the silver trim kind of shows through and you get the details. Unfortunately, this was the first try-on, so there are a few wires poking out where they should not be, but I took them in pretty quickly for the final try-on. I also could not resist trying out the colour option. So this was me messing with the app. Um, this was the rainbow setting, which looked absolutely stunning with the whole dress. Um, definitely one to try again. And I also could not resist trying out some of the musical settings. So this was actually Bippity Boppity Boo itself playing through the dress. And the pattern it made, which I thought was super cool. And it was really interesting to see. I did also get the dress to Vegas in the end and wore it around the Venetian Hotel, which was incredible. And I got some of the most magical shots. So here are a few of my favorites. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned a bit about the fiber optic fabric. Thank you so much for Louis Sonata for sending me the fabric in the first place. I This was the most amazing experience and I thoroughly enjoyed working with your fabric. And read the description for how to get your own. Also, if you want to see any more of these dresses, I know some other amazing creators who have also been sent this fabric and they've got some great videos. Check out Asta Darling, Official Hambly. I'll tag them in the um, description below. 
if you would like to see more of this sort of video, I will be posting a lot more tutorials on here now I kind of know how it works. And hopefully there'll be lots, for example, Barbie dresses, Disney dresses, etc. And I hope you guys stick around. Uh, so subscribe and hopefully I'll see you soon. Uh, have a nice day. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, bye.